Uh, so can you give, give us a little bit of a background on you know, yourself and what you've done in your career path so far to date? Uh, you know, that kind of like top down view of uh, who you are. Sure, man. So I grew up in Canada in, uh, in New Westminster and Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I, uh, I played a lot of video games and a lot of sports growing up. Uh, I think I started playing lacrosse at the age of five. That was my like my main sport. Uh, but I've also played hockey, basketball. I've hit the tennis ball a couple of times. You know, just always had that, that sports life going on. Um, in 2005, I was one of the highest ranked NHL 2005 players in the PS2. But back then, that didn't, that didn't mean anything. There was no, no eSports NHL 2005 league. So just kind of had that off to the side while I, you know, was playing rep hockey, rep lacrosse and whatnot. Um, fast forward to the, I guess, World of Warcraft era, uh, which is my high school era. Uh, I did a lot of economy related things. Like I always had buckets of gold. I hit gold cap once. Uh, and I also had a gladiator title in season five. Uh, just moving right along, I'm basically just plowing through every game that I've played. And then once League of Legends comes along, uh, I got stuck in silver for a bit. This was coming out of beta season one, season two. Um, didn't quite understand what was going on in terms of my rank, but I had great LAN performances. So there was two uh, League of Legends tournaments in Vancouver. One was Godicon. The other one was Lancouver. Shout out to both those. I don't think either of them run anymore. Um, but that was really the breeding ground for a lot of the pro players uh, that have passed through the LCS halls. We had uh, Heaven Time, Laud. Uh, I know I'm going to forget a bunch of people. Uh, Bobkin came out of there. Uh, was, I can't remember if there's other people. I think maybe Bishu came to a tournament once or twice. But, oh, Hanser. Han Hanser was always the one who took me out. <laughs> uh, I don't have a, La a Lancouver Godicon title, I think strictly because of Hanser. Uh, but yeah, man, just growing up, we we were we had this little group called ISP, International Space Pimps, uh, based out of Abbotsford. <laughs> yeah, no, we were great. We were great. And then uh, uh, we were all silvers, silvers and golds, uh, just a little little team. But I I remember we were in a win and in to get out of group stage and some got a con tournament probably like got a con 2013 or something like that and we're up against an all diamond team they weren't stacked like they weren't the best team in the tournament but they all had diamond rank and i played a riggles lantern uh iceborne gauntlet ezreal jungle and as soon as the iceborne gauntlet uh, iceborne gauntlet was finished all of us grouped five and pushed mid and uh we actually took out an all diamond team and got into the playoff stage as all silvers using turbo cheese that I invented. So that kind of put me on the map locally as the guy that plays Ezreal Jungle. In the to, to finish off the story, Ezreal got banned all three games in the playoffs and we lost. I, I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> you know I wasn't deep in the cheese there. Um, but this is all before you know even getting my first shot at competitive. I think the most important thing for me was going to these LAN tournaments and networking and and keeping communication going, like between games, walking over to the, the table area of the other people and introducing myself. Hi, I'm the jungler that you just played against. And then just, you know, seeing where the conversation goes. That got me an analyst tryout on New World Eclipse. Uh, shout out to uh, Nprom Siri, uh, Quas. Those those guys were, were my, my first team. Uh, we went to PAX and lost. Uh, in the first round of Cognitive, which was like so old school. Now that I'm looking back at it, like we had no idea what we were doing. But just like putting in the grind in the in the Challenger series, I coached maybe four or five. I say coach, but at the time we called it analyst work. But you just did what a coach would do. So I'm calling it coaching now. Um, we were just, you know, going through the motions team by team. I was working with Broken Shard and Prawley uh, on complexity. I spent some time on uh napkins in disguise which had uh the best player in the world to never go pro flappy bearfish uh he was a collegiate player who i think was legitimately the highest level player at the time but he just went with school like you ask any other old school player from that time flappy was king uh so when he retired we kind of lost our hopes of that team but yeah i was working with complexity 
going into the 2014 spring promotion tournament. Mm -hmm. um, ended up getting sick. Uh, I coached that team for maybe, I'd say, eight to ten months. And then in the last, like, one or two months, I passed the reins off to Coobs. And Coobs held it down. Uh, he, managed, he, he was the one who went to, to LAN and uh, was really brought the, the physical presence. That was good. I think, I think Coobs did a good job considering his experience and, and whatever at the time. Um, but that mm -hmm. itself, with the team promoting, allowed me to, you know, have a resume where there was no coaches back in, in 2014, man. There was me, uh, Alex Penn. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Alex Penn. He's got one of the most legendary tweets of all time, that, uh, that 2 nothing comeback tweet. There's no way There's no way they'll come back from this. Um, but yeah, man, no, once, uh, once I had that uh, championship, uh, or not the championship, but the, the promotion, uh, Alliance picked me up, and we, we won EULCS, we went to Worlds, we have a perfect game over Naj and White Shield, and also we have the Kaboom loss, uh, which I'm sure <laughs> I'll have to get into more later. I don't think I've really delved deep into the, the, the reasons behind that. Um, but yeah, man, no, uh, so from Alliance, we go to Gambit, uh, I had something to prove because I felt like my my time spent on Alliance was good and bad. Like so, I'm still a rookie coming into all this, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of my success was at the very beginning of my my coaching career. I'd been a game player up until like 2013, and then I just made the switch to coaching. Um, so we win EULCS. A lot of it is frogging. Like 90 90 percent plus of it. Is just frogging being frogging, but the whole time I'm watching and learning, right? Like uh, I'm providing structure to his thoughts. I'm using spreadsheets. I'm writing things down. It's basically having a Jordan or Michael Jordan, LeBron James in your team. You don't try to coach them; you try to enable them. So I felt like I had something to prove coming off of that season, especially with the the way Kaboom went down. So I switched to Gambit, who was in tenth at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, they try me out for IEM Cologne. They say, you know, I'm at home in, in Vancouver. And they say, hey, we're, we're looking at picking up a coach next year. Uh, do you want to try out with us by helping us for the IEM? I say, sure. I, I create this, this awesome strategy because CLG had to send Think Card to this tournament instead of their, their main jungler. I forget who it was at the time, but Think Card was playing. What ends up happening is uh, we devised this triple ban the jungler and always attack the jungler strategy, where I basically told the boys, look, their, their worst player on their team is the jungler. So anytime you have a fight or an engagement or, or some sort of action, make sure Think Card is one of the people pressing buttons in that fight, uh, because he's the most likely one to make an error. And I think we, we 3 0 them, or it was 3 0 or 3 1. It was very convincing. And so that, that gave me the job. Uh, went to Gambit. They went from 10th to 4th by the end of the year. We had that legendary 05 to 75 run. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that was just establishing fundamentals within the game, understanding. I think the, the biggest rule that I had to take away was you can't learn how to play late game until you learn how to play the mid game. You can't learn how to play the mid game until you learn how to play the early game. So we're just going to start at the bottom and just keep improving our game and, and, until it gets to the point where it's a complete game. And then we can go from there. But let's just make sure we're, we're on the sticks correctly. And yeah, we had a lot of success. Um, we ended up getting knocked out in the quarterfinals by Unicorns of Love, who were like the first team to really embrace cheese. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they really punished us too, because we were in the break room. I don't know, in LCS, they have like a catering section there's like a place with tv and there's a place with couches but then there's a room that's just food and so half the players are in the uh the tv room half the players are munching down on snacks and we're in there after a game unicorns love about to play we just played um and we're talking about cheese and i mentioned that jungle shaco was actually broken and i had mentioned this to gambit but gambit wasn't down for picking up the shaco and then What's funny is is Unicorns of Love ends up playing Shaco in the last game to eliminate us from uh, from the playoffs, and that was a strategy I had given them like ten or eleven weeks ago, and I had forgot. Uh, and they last pick Shaco. I only get like thirty seconds on the headset to tell my team how to play against Shaco, and uh, yeah, man, like that was a wild, wild exit.